I'm going to go with Steve Weintraub Collider. How are, how are you doing today, sir? Good choice. I like the choice, Steve. Very good. Yes, I'm well. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, you might not remember this, but it was, I guess, two years ago when we spoke and you told me how you were writing a very personal film and obviously it ended with, uh, you know, it's Belfast. And I'm, and I'm curious, first of all, congratulations on the movie. Um, if the pandemic had never happened, do you think this film would have still happened? It's an interesting question. I sometimes ask myself that. It certainly provided a quiet and an introspection that allowed for the sounds of Belfast to come right into my head. Uh, but I think that in any case, after 50 years, this sense that what happened on that day, August 15th, 1969, when I heard that sound and then I saw those shapes and then I saw those people, I, I be I'd begun to understand over decades changed my life profoundly and that I had not adjusted to what that meant and I needed somehow to go uh, explore it. You've been in this business a long time. You know that um, not everything gets amazing reviews, great reviews. What has it been like for you with this film with the such the strong reception by critics and audiences? Well, it's fantastic when you meet people who are from wildly different parts of the world come up to you and say, that's my story. That is the biggest thrill, to be honest, because I wrote from the heart with a very specific story of a very specific place. That it, that it seems to touch people in that way is amazing. And what I love is that when people do come up to me, having seen the film, they don't talk about the film. Their opening lines are almost always about their own childhood. Somehow the little explosion of the story has just ignited things in their own lives that you can see they want to speak about and share. For me, that is an absolute thrill. Uh, I think you might remember this about me, but I love talking about the editing process because it's ultimately where it comes together. Can you sort of talk about some of the challenges you encountered when you got in the editing room? Were there any big obstacles that you had to overcome? Biggest obstacle, Steve, was not having the editor in the room. Uh, Una uh, was in Dublin and I was just outside London, but it meant that we both were like sort of worker ants going through what in this case, to answer your question, was the detailed excavation of every slither of Jude Hill's performance, every glint in the eye in a listening moment that allowed us to be compelled by the boy absorbing his situation. Half of his performance was always going to be reacting. So the search for the perfect moments of reaction that are most alive, most present, most concentrated, that was where most of my energies went. And going through, I must have gone through, I mean, hundreds of hours of news archival footage from that period in, in, in the history of Northern Ireland, which was amazing to do. And, and, and the, the benefit, if you like, of, of being locked down to do it was that I had the time to try and get that right. Uh, can I ask, did you have like a much longer cut? Did you end up with a lot of deleted scenes? I did have a much longer cut. I had a really much longer script to begin with. Uh, it had a modern buddy, it had an older buddy, it had a return to Belfast for the same character. It had music from all sorts of other places, including Van Morrison's amazing catalogue. Um, so yes, there was really quite a lot that needed to be refined back down to the period story uh, framed by the colour of the city, but not by older buddy. An original structural inspiration had been Cinema Paradiso, which you'll remember starts with a grown up man who discovers the, the death of the projectionist back in his hometown. He goes back there and the story unfolds from there. For our story, that ended up not working. But yes, there was a great deal that was uh, uh, sort of uh, re refined down to the essential. I know I'm out of time, but can I just ask, will any of that footage ever be seen or is it tucked away? No, you will see some of those deleted scenes on the home entertainment version, um, uh, um, in, in, including that, that, that return and, and, uh, and several other scenes that might surprise you. Cool, I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch. Thank you so much for your time. And as always, great to talk with you. Good to talk to you, Steve, nice to see you. Thank you. A Thor in the background next time, not Iron Man, please. <laughs> I will make a note. I got it. No problem.